Hello, today we're starting a new booklet, Exponential and Logarithmic Functions. Let's scroll over to page two. So first thing we're going to talk about is exponential growth and decay. So you've probably heard a lot about exponential growth with coronavirus going on, but basically exponential growth happens when the exponent itself is the input. And so basically the first time, or if you put in x equals 1, it's raised to the first power, and then 2, it's raised to the second power, third power, and actually let's look at these numbers really quick. So this one here, this would be 2 to the first, this would be 2 squared, 2 to the third, and so you can see that the numbers start getting large pretty quickly, because every single time it's raised to an additional power, or a higher power. And that's what we're going to be talking about. So it's not always that dramatic. It depends on, basically, a lot depends on this number right here. So the thing that's being raised to the power, it's either going to be representing growth or it's going to be representing decay or basically something getting much smaller. So for instance, if b is greater than 1, then every time you raise it to a power, it's increasing. The function is increasing. So this is a picture of that right here. And the parent graph says that it's always going to be 0, 1 right at this spot right here. And that's because if you raise something to the 0 power, then it's always 1. But there's other transformations that can happen. And then another important feature is there's something called an asymptote. And that's a line that the graph gets really, really close to, but it never quite touches. And that's because if you think about it down here, so when you get to a negative power, like let's say that you had 2 to the negative 5, that would be the same as 1 over 2 to the 5th. And as that 5 gets larger and larger, it's going to get, like this fraction is going to become very, very tiny, but it's never going to quite be 0. Even though it will be practically 0, but it's never going to quite touch. It's not going to ever cross over that line. And there are changes that asymptote can change it can be up a little higher or lower depending on some, if something's added or subtracted to the graph. But just know in general there's going to be this line, this horizontal line, that it never quite touches. And then it's going to make this shape where it starts getting steeper and steeper as it goes up like that. And then the other thing to think about is if you have a number between 0 and 1, and so it has to be smaller than 1, because if it's just 1 it's not going to ever change. If it's 0, it's just going to always be 0, but it has to be between 0 and 1, and it means that it's getting smaller every time, because just imagine if you had something like y equals 1 half to the x. When you multiply by 1 half by itself, you would get 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth, and if you multiply by itself again, it becomes 1 over 8, and you multiply again, 1 over 16, it just keeps getting like smaller and smaller and smaller, but it never quite reaches zero, so it's going to be very tiny. So it's just the opposite of the other graph, but it starts off large and then gets smaller, smaller, smaller like that. And you might be thinking, what about if it's negative, not the x, but what if the, what if the base is negative? But that's actually a different situation, so the general form indicates that this is positive. And if you have a negative, it's going to be right here. So that can be negative or positive. And that would just flip the whole graph over. And we'll deal a little bit more with that when we talk about transformations. So we're assuming that the base is always going to be positive. OK. Let's just graph a couple of these, and that will kind of give you an idea how it works. So it says, tell whether each function represents exponential growth or exponential decay. So how you tell is you look at what's being raised to the power, and if it's greater than 1, it represents growth. If it is between 0 and 1, then it represents decay. So this is obviously bigger than 1, right? So this is going to be exponential growth. And now let's just go ahead and draw a little xy chart to get a general idea what this looks like. And we're going to start with some negative numbers. How about negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 
two, and I think we have room to even do three. Okay, and we're going to plug it into this formula. So y equals 2 to the x. So we're going to say 2 to the negative 2, which is the same as 1 over 2 squared, which is the same as 1 over 4. And then I guess we don't need to write y equals. And then 2 to the x again. So now we have 2 to the negative 1 equals 1 over 2, which equals, well, 1 half is 1 half. And then... If you want to change it to a decimal, sometimes that's nice for graphing. That would be the same as 0 0.25, and that would be the same as 0 0.5. Okay, and then 2 to the 0 always equals 1, if you have it raised to the 0 power. And 2 to the 1st equals 2. 2 squared equals 4. And then 2 to the 3rd equals 8. Now let's go ahead and graph these points. So our first point is negative 2.25. So 2 to the left, and then 0.25, you're going to have to kind of estimate, probably about right there. And then negative 1, 0.5, 1 to the left, and then halfway up. Next is 0 and 1, and then we have 1 and 2. Next is 2 and 4, Then last we have 3 and 8. 2, 3, 8's all the way up there. Okay, so you can see that if we had additional points to enter, you can see that it's going to start getting to be a very large number. And based on the thing that we know, whoops, based on the thing that we know that we have in the symptote, you can see that it's getting very close to this line right here. And so we're going to kind of sketch it and know that it's getting very close to that line, but it's never going to touch it. So we can assume that it's going to go kind of like that. And it goes up like that. Okay, let's look at the next one. So this time we have 1 half, which is between 0 and 1. So we know that it is decay. And let's draw a little xy chart. How much space I have. When I zoom out, it's hard to see how much space I have. Okay. Or when I zoom in, rather. And so this time we're going to do kind of the opposite. We'll do negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And this time it's 1 half to the x. So the first one is going to be 1 half to the negative 3. Next is going to be 1 half to the negative 2, 1 half to the negative 1, 1 half to the 0, 1 half to the first, one half to the second. So it's kind of nice to do this assembly line style really quick. Okay, so one half to the negative three. So just remember when you have a negative exponent, it's going to flip flop the numerator and the denominator. And once you do that, it's like it's positive. So we've got two over one to the third, which really just ends up being eight. And then one half to the negative two equals. We don't need to write the 1 on the bottom this time. 2 squared, which is 4. And then 1 half to the negative 1 equals regular 2. 1 half to the 0 is 1, because anything to the 0 power is 1. 1 half to the first equals 1 half. And then 1 half squared equals 1 fourth. And now let's graph these. Okay, so you've got negative 3, 8. So 3 to the left and then up 8. Way up there. And then next we have negative 2, 4. So 2 to the left and then 4 up to here. Negative 1, 2. 1 to the left, up 2. 0 and 1. 1 and 1 half. And then 1 and 1 fourth. And our little quick sketch. So we know that it's going to be getting very close to the x-axis, but it's never going to quite touch it. It'll probably look like it's touching it on my graph, but just visualize that it's not actually touching it. All right, I think that's it for today. And on the pod, actually, you're just going to be saying whether it's growth or decay. So just remember to look at the base, and that will tell you if it's growth or decay. All right, talk to you later. Bye.